So again, before we get started, because I know that everybody's not going to make it through the full video, um, during the part where you feel that you've heard enough, let me know your opinions uh, specifically about what it is that you are able to hear, uh, both from the video and from what I'm going to read off to you uh, from Barack Obama prior to the endorsement of Kamala Harris. Okay, so as you guys know, and I've commonly told you guys before that, I don't really have a dog in this race. Um, I just don't like the fact where I feel as though with the evidence that people are not really as authentic as it seems. If we are looking or to take to 100% of what it is that Barack Obama has stated that him and Michelle are going to endorse Kamala, then realistically, that should have been the initial sentiments from the very beginning. But as we can clearly see, that is not it. So what I'm going to do is just briefly go over both uh, parts of the article that he posted on his very own site. Go. When I began my search for vice president, I knew about Joe's remarkable career in public service. But what I came to admire even more was his character his deep empathy and hard-earned resilience, his fundamental decency and belief that everyone counts. Since taking office, President Biden has displayed that character again and again. He helped end the pandemic, created millions of jobs, lowered the cost of prescription drugs, passed the first major piece of gun safety legislation in 30 years, made the biggest investment to address climate change in history, and fought to ensure the rights of working people to organize for fair wages and benefits. Internationally, he has restored America's standing in the world, revitalized NATO, and mobilized the world to stand up against Russian aggression in the Ukraine. More than that, President Biden has pointed us away from the four years of chaos, falsehoods, and division that had characterized Donald Trump's administration. His policies and his example, Joe has reminded us of who we are at our best. Our country committed to old fashioned values like trust and honesty kindness and hard work, a country that believes in democracy, rule of law, and accountability, a country that insists that everyone, no matter who they are, has a voice and deserves a chance at a better life. This outstanding track record gave President Biden every right to run for re-election and finish the job he started. Joe understands better than anyone the stakes in this election, how everything he has fought for throughout his life and everything that the Democratic Party stands for will be at risk if we allow Donald Trump back in the White House and give Republicans control of Congress. I also know Joe has never backed down from a fight. For him to look at the political landscape and decide that he should pass the torch to a new nominee is surely one of the toughest in his life. But I know he wouldn't make this decision unless he believed it was right for America. It's a testament to Joe Biden's love of country, an historic example of a genuine public servant, once again putting the interest of the American people ahead of his own that future generations of leaders will do well to follow. We will be navigating uncharted waters in the days ahead, but I have extraordinary confidence that the leaders of our party will be able to create a process from which an outstanding nominee emerges. I believe that Joe Biden's vision of generous, prosperous, and united America that provides opportunities for everyone will be on full display at the Democratic Convention in August. And I expect that every single one of us are prepared to carry that message of hope and progress forward into November and beyond. For now, Michelle and I just want to express our love and gratitude to Joe and Jill for leading us so ably and courageously during these perilous times and for their commitment for the ideals of freedom and equality that this country was founded on. So again, I just want to reiterate for me, I don't have a dog in this race because neither of the people on display for me is really pushing forth or trying to do anything for the black community specifically. And again, normally when it is that you are supposed to vote, you're going to vote for the person that you either think or feel will do the best to represent you and to bring things forward that are concerns or to fix certain things that are of concerns when it deals with you, your family, your neighborhood, your community. But that doesn't mean that I won't focus on things that deal with locally, such as uh, mayor, such as a state representative, such as a police chief, such as a DA, such as uh, a judge, and so on and so on and so on. Again, 
uh, locally. These are things that you can touch and see. These are technically individuals that you can actually go up to and have a conversation with, you know, throughout a year um, at a multitude of different things. Um, there's a rare instance of which that you yourself being the person that you are will be able throughout the year to have a conversation literally with the president of the United States, somebody who is quote unquote supposed to represent everybody. But yet we know that that is impossible for a person to do because there are so many different cultures, uh, different languages, religions, and so on and so on and so on. So this is the one thing that I'm trying to convey to the people here. Uh, the simple fact that Barack Obama decided, again, previously, before they wanted to specifically showcase that call to everybody in the commercial that, oh, we support, you know, Kamala and, you know, she's going to do a great job. Before that, uh, it was a, well, you know, there's there's a lot of great nominees directly out there and we're going to let the process be the process. Nowhere in there did uh, Barack Obama literally state that him and Michelle decided that they wanted to support Kamala from the get-go. For whatever reason, this came out way later. And again, I'm looking at the authenticity of it. If you originally supported somebody, if you automatically had this thought process, then this would have been something that you would have initially showcased in the original writings that you made prior to your announcement of, okay, we're going to support uh, Kamala. This this is what me and Michelle have uh, decided, and this is what we're going to throw everything directly at. Now, automatically, if we're to look at this, right, one instance, you're going to let the process be the process, and, you know, when November comes, we're going to see who it is that we basically got. But on the other end, now you're like, okay, we're throwing all of our eggs in one basket, and we're putting everything on Kamala. What just happened here? Because if I'm to look at this and I'm supposed to look at the rest of the Democratic nominees, nobody's going to look at the rest of the nominees. If you have a former president putting and his wife putting everything directly on one person that, in a sense, was not a nominee. This was just somebody that just got thrown directly into the limelight. This wasn't somebody who specifically earned the votes. This wasn't somebody specifically who's been out here on the trail, going door to door, going city to city, town to town, and speaking to people. This is not what we're dealing with. We're dealing with somebody who was in a sense given this. And this is why you ended up hearing Kamala come out on Twitter saying that she's going to wait up until she's earned what it is that she has at this moment in time, because rightfully so, she didn't earn it at all. She wasn't on a trail. She wasn't shaking hands, kissing babies. She wasn't talking to the workers. She was sitting directly in the White House or flying around doing whatever, but she, she wasn't on a trail like everybody else at this moment in time. So again, it, 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 it's a little bit disingenuous to say that the process, we're going to let the process be, and then you're throwing everything here. Because now what we're looking at is a landscape where everybody has decided instead of trying to vote or allow somebody to campaign so that the people can get the feel for them, we're just going to throw somebody directly out there. And then we're going to have celebrities and everybody else along with, you know, some money and whatnot to propel this person directly up there. That's a little bit crazy to me. So I'm like, we're just going to forego all of the other people that are running for the, the Democratic Party. We're just going to forego all those people and just go for this one person. How does that happen? That's a little bit uneven to me. That's like watching an Olympic race and you see all of the other people that trained and before they're able to literally leave the gate and start running, you allow somebody to get a mile head start who didn't even train for anything, but yet you're allowing them to be in a race. That's the same thing. That's the exact same thing. All of the hard work, all of the dedication, all of the energy, all of the money spent that the other potentially lesser known people that are running. So what, what happened to that? What happened to that? All of the effort gone in a flash because now all people know is Kamala's running. That's it. That's it. And that's crazy to me. So this is why I said before that um, amongst other reasons that I don't realistically have a dog in this race because I do not see any of the candidates here specifically representing or trying to do for the black community. I'm talking about without the black community initially trying to come directly towards them, um, trying to ask of them 
um, trying to donate millions of dollars so that they can say something. I'm just talking about genuinely, right? Again, off the cuff, I don't see anybody doing it. Nobody. And again, when you can sit up there and show me candidates who are specifically talking about reparations for the black community, for black Americans, for people who have legitimacy, who have a long line, a long bloodline of being here, didn't just get here. And those are the people that's going to specifically get it. Then we can sit up there and start to have that conversation. Because again, as stated before, the main problem is everybody else has gotten a form of reparations. You can go with both the Japanese and the Chinese. You can also go to uh, Jewish individuals as well. You can go directly towards uh, Caucasian Americans, when they dealt with slavery and the slaves uh, being injured in any type of way, they got a form of reparations uh, for their quote unquote property uh, being damaged, uh, the Native Americans, so on and so on and so on. So you've had a multitude of groups in the United States receive a form of reparations for something. But yet the main people that don't receive anything, the main people that everybody is against to receive any type of money is black Americans. And again, you have to ask yourself, why? And again, I'm going to showcase the fact that uh, in one of my previous videos, I gave you guys information that showcased that Kamala Harris um, specifically stated that she's not going to do anything specifically for black Americans. Right. She's going to do it for everybody. But yet every single time somebody gets in office, what do you see them do? They're specifically writing legislation. They're writing laws that people must abide by they're making sure to make anti-hate bills for a lot of different groups out here so again when people want to get on this soapbox and state that no president can just specifically do something for one group because they have to represent everybody just know that those are lies just know that those people are trying to trick you into believing that the president of the united states will represent everybody realistically the president of the united states represents the interest of america not the people but the interest of america realistically the president of the united states will do things if you have happened to donate money in order to get them to speak just like any other representatives directly out of congress senate whoever or the mayor whenever it is that you throw money millions of dollars directly at a campaign this is when they'll be like oh you you, you gave us 15 million oh you're one of our largest donors thank you what what do you need from me what do you need me to speak on? What do you need me to? This is what they will do. They will show you, like, okay, now I'm working for you because you've given me this amount of money. So because you've done that, I am now in your debt. Tell me what you need. So again, it, it is a multifaceted situation. There are a lot of moving parts directly here. But again, the main thing that I just want to state is when it deals with uh, Barack Obama it seems a little bit disingenuous to say that you want the process to be the process, the same process that you went through in order to become the president of the United States. But yet you're going to forego that process and throw everything directly at Kamala, along with the media and along with the celebrities that will be coming up to endorse her. One of which was Beyonce, who gave the OK for Kamala to use her song. So, like I said, we already see where everything is going, where everything is heading. Nobody cares about the other people running. They only care about one person.